Okay, um, just one small thought before we um, get into the, this um, uh, lesson. It is from um, Colossians chapter 4, right? Colossians chapter 4 and verse 2, where uh, we see this these words. Um, Continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant with thanksgiving. You know, a lot of instructions Paul gives in right from chapter 3 onwards um, to the church in Colossae. And uh, this is what he says, you know, continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving. You know, continue, meaning just don't give up, continue. Uh, there could be many reasons for giving up, but continue, you know. And so some reasons why we give up is because we are discouraged. We haven't seen the answers soon enough or at the time frame that we wanted to see the answers. So we we give up, right? Um, or we somehow, you know, there's some reasoning in our minds that, uh, hey, maybe, um, maybe this is not God's will. Maybe this is not what God wants. Something, you know, we just re reach that conclusion or maybe somebody tells us, hey, you're praying for the wrong thing. And uh, so we give up, right? And um, sometimes we are so discouraged, we give up. Sometimes we forget, you know, we started out and then there are other things, maybe some worries, some things came up and then we, we forget, we just, you know, give up praying. Right? So Paul is saying, continue. And he says, uh, you know, how should we continue? Continue earnestly, right? Which means sincerely, which means with, uh, it's like saying diligently, you know, be earnest um, in your efforts. Let it not be for the sake of doing something, you know, let your heart be in it, continue earnestly. And um, being vigilant, you know, being alert, it's like, it's like a watchman. You know, being vigilant, it's like a, maybe watchmen nowadays sleep a lot, <laughs> but he'll say, okay, maybe like a soldier, you know, at an outpost, you know, there's a small noise and hey, who goes there? Alert. So we see a lot of attributes there. Continue, don't give up, don't be discouraged, earnestly, you know, with sincerity, with effort, being vigilant in it, being alert. He says, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving you know is reminded of philippians right last chapter where that instruction of you know you pray with thanksgiving you know why should we why is there thanksgiving because we know that prayers are being heard we know that he knows our needs we give thanks because he is the answer right um so so much you know is there in that one verse uh but i just want to ask us you know what are some things that we have stopped praying for Right, that we gave up praying, maybe because of discouragement, maybe because someone else told us, or, or we ourselves reasoned in our mind, we ourselves put limits on God and say, you know, that's too big, you know, that's too wonderful, that cannot happen. So we ourselves put limits, you know, we close the gate and said, oh God, maybe you know, on this part of the thing, or my dream, or you know, whatever desires, I just want to close it, right? So, what is it? that we have stopped it maybe we've stopped praying for our loved ones to be saved maybe we stopped praying for you know our own call that god has for us you know we stopped praying for that maybe we stopped praying for some breakthrough in some area you know it could be you know for physical healing maybe something to do with our emotions maybe something to do with our you know uh, financial needs um, it could be some breakthrough in some area like it could be some legal issue, which is pending at court. Um, it could be something that needs to be sold, something that needs to be bought. You know, we gave up because maybe it's been a decade, you know. So what are some things that the Lord is bringing to our mind to continue earnestly in prayer, being vigilant in it with thanksgiving? You know, can we come back to that place of continuing earnestly in prayer, right? So let's take some time to pray. And maybe, you know, each one of us, we might have some needs that we have we have dropped or we are not continuing earnestly or we're not being alert in it or we're not giving thanks to God. You know, let's put all these things together and whatever uh, be uh, that 
that aspect of prayer or whatever is it that that the lord holy spirit is you know teaching us or prompting us right now you know let's go after that right let's pray father we thank you lord thank you lord yes lord thank you for this reminder for this exhortation god yes that we are to continue earnestly in prayer lord being vigilant in it the thanksgiving father god we pray that um, yeah even right now we pray for those things that we might have left by the wayside we pick it up again we pray for those things that we might have given up lord because we haven't seen the answers soon enough lord we pray for those things that we sometimes lord think it's too difficult too big too marvelous too wonderful and so we've put limitations lord we pray for those things again yes lord we pray lord knowing that you are the one who hears our prayers you're the one who receives you're the one who answers lord you're the god who answers by fire you're the god who moves mountains lord you're the one who parts oceans lord and so lord we bring these back to you father god we bring these needs back to you father god yes lord we pray for breakthrough today we pray for mountains to move lord we pray for supernatural provision god we pray for breakthrough, Lord, in, in various areas of our lives, God, maybe emotionally, physically. Lord, we pray for chains of addictions to break. Lord, Father, we pray for revelation and understanding, God, um, to come through, Father God, in the inner man, Lord. We pray for strength in the inner man. We pray for yeah, yeah manifestation of healing, God. Uh, we pray for creative miracles, oh, Father God. Yes, Lord, things that need to change inside of us, oh God, let it change, oh God. Organs function the way you designed each one of them to function in every single cell and tissue and muscle and bone and joint, oh God. The finished work of Jesus, oh God, we just speak that, oh God, we release that in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. 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 <clears throat> okay. Okay, so um, last class we looked at mechanics of sermon construction, right? And we looked at uh, the the title. Okay, we looked at uh, okay every sermon. It's good to give a title. Um, so how does it help us? It draws attention to the message, right? Draws attention to what the message is about. Gives an idea about what the message is about. Okay, so it gives um, uh, it gives us. Uh, you know, it makes us curious and uh, and wants us to listen to the message. You know, and especially today, since a lot of messages are online, uh, a good title definitely draws us to the message, right? And um, so, yeah, let's look at a few things. So, a title should reflect the main theme or content of the message. So it must not obscure the content in the sense, you know, it's it's good to have a creative title. It's good to have a title that's, uh, um, you know, that's, I, I would say, um, maybe, you know, it's uh, it's not the usual. It's very unusual, right? It creates a lot of interest. It's fine. But at the same time, it should, it should be something that talks about the content, okay? Um, and uh, it should be simple. And it should serve the purpose of a title. You know, it should also complement the message. And um, what a title does is it really provides a good atmosphere for the sermon. Okay, it's like um, when you have a good title, when you uh, when you you know start with that, it provides a good atmosphere, meaning uh, an environment for the sermon to be preached. Right, because it's. It, it just creates that kind of anticipation in people's minds and curiosity and maybe, you know, even opens their hearts, right? Expectation, all that comes in a title. So it can be a question, it can be a phrase, it, and, uh, you know, it can be it can be all that, all of that, right? Um, so uh, a title is different from a topic. Okay, so for example, the topic of your sermon could be faith. Okay, so it could be faith. Now, the title could be, you know, faith or mountain moving faith. That could be the title. Okay, or um, uh, whatever you know, 
ocean parting faith or mountain moving faith or faith in the midst of fiery trials so depends on what the direction or what the message is about right the content of the sermon is about so the so the title can be that so you get the difference right so the topic can be faith but the title can be something to do with faith you know um it can be it can say you know um, do you have faith or or great is your faith you know like what jesus told the centurion right he said great is your faith um something like that so so um see one thing about the title like especially in today's times is like a lot of people search search online like for the topic you know let's say they want to hear a message on um for example gifts of the spirit they would go to google and then search you know gifts of the spirit or christian message um they will they will type that out okay and what google does it is searches it's a search engine it searches and so if our message that we put online has something to do with that you know uh, do with the search so that is what they call as seo search engine optimization okay seo so um so in the message that goes on have you noticed a lot of hashtags okay so what are those for you know one you know uh, yeah how how does it reach yeah so so when they search it actually searches for these you know when you whenever you put a hashtag it searches for this so you have a message like okay enduring faith and you put a hashtag sermon on faith sermon on faith or how to increase your faith you know so when people search for all these questions you know how to increase what is faith so you put a hashtag what is faith um you know so a hashtag um how to increase my faith hashtag how to whatever you put all this so whenever people search for that it directs them to this content okay and of course the title you know you have a title um, let's say if you have a very cryptic title in the sense um, what are some interesting titles um i don't know we had some um, some some titles it was i think it was a very uh, uh, it was a latin title okay um so this was for a church service i remember we had what was called a apc sports day okay so the whole church was participating in sports so that sunday morning we met in a ground okay so the church service sunday morning happened on a ground field that is baldwin boys school ground so it was outdoors so we finished the message uh when this service it was a short service and then we had the sports day so everybody there's a lot of things this football cricket and everything and so i remember pastor sharing that message and it was three latin words altius something you know it it just means uh faster higher greater or something like that okay and um now now pastor say actually he shared about that because he's you know being um it person right so you understand he said see now nobody is going to search for that nobody will search for altius whatever you know it was latin words right but if there is a hashtag there saying greater higher or faith in a great god who is greater or you need to go further you know then it will probably direct to this message okay so the thing is uh, when we i mean there's so much about the title we don't have to spend a lot of time you know what should i give the title but it's good to keep it simple and the good to keep it thinking in mind 5 years 10 years from now right because you're putting it you know you're putting it online people will search if you have a title that is only going to serve that particular sunday for that particular congregation you know it's like an insider joke right like only only we understand you know if we say something about something related to bc something related to you know a supernatural hour or something only we understand it it's our language right? but if we want the world outside to understand access search then the title has to be you know in that manner okay so give it some thought right then uh, what is the next part of it 
So, but did you understand the difference between the topic and the title? Right? Topic is the subject. No, title is like the main heading. Main heading, yeah. Well, for example, Sunday's message. Yeah, what is Sunday's message? Last Sunday's message. The power of the gospel. Okay, that's the title. That's the title of the sermon. Okay, so what is the subject matter? What is the what is the topic of the sermon? <coughs> It's about God. It's about sharing the gospel. So that's the subject. You know, that's that's what we the sermon whole sermon is about. But the title given to the sermon is the power of the gospel. The topic is sharing the gospel. Yeah, right? it's about sharing the gospel because that's what the whole message is about. Saying that the gospel. Uh, uh, the message is, uh, of the gospel is the message of the cross, and the message of the cross is the power of God. The way of the cross is the power of God. So that's why Paul says he's not ashamed of the gospel, etc., etc., and therefore everybody is called to share the gospel. So, so that's the thing, right? So, um, yeah. So we just need to know that the difference between, like, for example, okay, um, the nine gifts. Okay, let's say that's the title. What what is the topic? The gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay, so the nine gifts. I could give a title like the nine gifts, or this these gifts are for you. That could be a title. These gifts are for you, or these gifts are for everyone. That could be a title. But the topic, the subject, what we are going to deal with in the message, is the gifts of the Spirit. Right. Okay. Yeah. So that's the thing, right? <clears throat> okay. So uh, introduction. Okay. The introduction is the process by which the preacher prepares the hearts and minds of people, secures the interest. So it's like the first few words that you, as a preacher, will actually address and talk to the audience about. Okay. So um, it introduction is is good. It's essential. Uh, if you're a visiting person, you'll probably say a few words about yourself, right? You'll introduce yourself. Okay, I'm I'm so and so. This is what I do. This is where I come from. This is what my family is. Um, you know something about yourself. You know, you say that, and then you move into introducing the sermon. Okay, so it it introduces what the sermon is about. Let's say, for example, um, let's look at Sunday's sermon. Uh, the power of the gospel. Okay, so if you look at the introduction, what could possibly be an introduction? Good way to introduce the message. What do you think? Okay. Okay. So, what would you want to say to the congregation? I mean, there's you can approach it different ways, right? This, so you can you could yeah, like you said, okay. Let's say you're saying okay, the commission, great commission. So you could start by saying, hey, we are all commissioned. We are all on a mission. All of us. Do you know what that mission is? You know, so introduction could start that way, or it could start about the gospel. You know, the gospel. We have there is this good news. There is this great news. And why is it the good news? Why is it the great news? And also, why is it for everybody? This is, a, you know, here's a message that is worth reaching the whole world. The, why is, uh, you know, why is this message worth reaching the whole world? So your introduction, you know, you could start that way. These are the first three words you're talking about it, right? About the message. So it could be, it could be a question. It could be um, anything, you know, uh, of that matter. Um, well, some people um, use humor, right? Some people use statistics to start off with saying, in the world, the, the population of the world is, you know, you could start that way, saying, okay, this is the population, and, uh, you know, this percentage does not know the gospel. You know, so much, so many people live in the city, so many people. 
yeah, you know, you could start with statistics. Some people use humor, you know, some people use jokes to start off with. Uh, and you need to be careful because suppose people don't understand the joke, they don't laugh, and then they look very serious, then that's it. You know, it's not a good start, right? So, so the thing is uh, that you need to be a little, you know, careful. Um, and so on, right? So some people use, um, uh, I remember this preacher. So he he was actually um, a professor in SIAX, SIAX, I say busy, SIAX, I think. Yeah, so he uh, he came to APC once and then he uh, he started off um, his message. And, and most of his messages, he starts off with, with this, okay? He starts off with a poem. Let me just see if there is, um, uh, if I have it. Um, it's really nice. I find it. I found it very interesting, and it's um, it's a poem of, about the word. Yeah, it's a poem about the Bible. So he's written like several of those. So he starts by reading it. Okay. Um, so it's called. Uh, excuse me. It's called My Precious Old Book. Okay. His name is Dr. Chris Nyanakar. My Precious Old Book. Okay. That's how it goes. Though the cover be torn and its pages be worn and places bear traces of tears, yet more precious than gold is this book, worn and old, that can shatter and scatter my fears. As I prayerfully look in this precious old book, many treasures and pleasures I see, many promises of love from my Father above, who is nearest and dearest to me. This book is a guide, is a friend by my side. It will lighten and brighten my day. And each promise I find soothes and gladdens my mind as I preach it and teach it each day. To this book I will cling, of its worth I will sing, though many crosses and losses be mine. For, for I cannot despair, though surrounded by care, while possessing this blessing divine. Okay, so he, it's about the Bible, so he holds the Bible and he you know, says it. And of course he doesn't read it out, he, he says it from memory. So he wrote it. He composed it. So uh, every time he would, he would start with something like that, and then he talks about the the importance of the word of God, and then gets into the message. Some you know. So it can be a poem. It can be a hymn. It can be a song. Uh, but if it's related, you know, you're, it, you're, it's an introduction. So it needs to be um, sorry related to the uh, sermon, and then it'll be good. Okay. So then um, now this is a. See what I'm suggest. What we are looking at is a is a typical outline. Okay, it's good if you follow it. The reason being, it's not like it's chapter and verse. The reason being, it's a practical thing. It's a practical help for enabling people to receive it. So with that intent, okay, why are we preaching? So that people hear, people listen, people understand, and they put to practice the truth, right? Because the truth of God's word is power. So that's the reason, that's the intent of preaching. So with that intent, it's good to follow, you know, these kind of outlines, right? Okay. Okay, then there is a, what is what we called as a proposition. Okay. Um, now the proposition is the big idea or a big thought um about the about the actual message you know, i'll just probably go down to there's something called a proposition and um and also uh, uh, a transitional sentence etc we don't need to go into the you know details of it you can read it in the in the notes okay let's just look at an example of it okay <clears throat> uh, if you go down to page 31 um almost at the end of it Right. This is an example. For example, um, title. The title of the message is an exemplary ministry, and it's it's from the portion one Thessalonians two verses one to twelve. Okay. Um, what is the proposition? Okay. So this is the big idea. So that you're saying that that the servant of God has a exemplary pattern for his ministry. Okay. So that's the proposition. That's the that's the big idea of the message. That is that one thought. That's going to go through out the entire sermon, entire message, right? The servant of God has an exemplary pattern. Or, you know, if you take an example of Sunday's message, you know, the gospel of the gospel that has been interested to us has intrinsic power because it is God's word. 
or whatever you know something like that interrogative sentence and transitional sentence now these are also parts of the you know what follows the or what is part of the introduction interrogative sentence what is interrogation interrogation means question right to interrogate someone is to ask someone questions so interrogative sentence meaning you make you 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 make that declaration about the message this you know uh, you know the servant of god has an exemplary pattern for his ministry then the interrogative sentence or a question what are the characteristics of this pattern for ministry okay so you ask that question then that is the transitional you're answering that question and you're saying according to 1 Thessalonians 2 1 to 12 Paul's ministry exemplifies um talks about four characteristics which could be which should be true in the ministry of a servant of God today okay so the big idea the question and answering that question which follows into the message right so those four things that he is going to talk about that this sermon is going to talk about is actually the four main points of the sermon okay the four main points of the sermon so we could we could have a this is a suggested outline we could have an outline like this okay so so what what are those four points you know those are the main points of the sermon okay so think about it you know in whatever sermon that you're going to that you want to put together that you want to share what are those four things five things it could be 10 things whatever you know what are those things that you're going to that you want to highlight okay so i'm sure all of us are used to doing it right you, you're used to leading devotions and you maybe you look at some two things three things or maybe just one thing you know, during the time of the devotion right um so in the message what is it what are those things that you want to what are the points main points that you want to highlight we're calling them divisions calling them main points okay there could be that certain points need a little more depth in explanation so which means that that requires sub points there could be three or four sub points under a main point okay because the subject matter is so vast so you need to break it down and have maybe two or three sub points within that so that's also fine okay so have those have those main points have those sub points just make sure that the main points are you know there is a difference. The point one, point two should not be the same or should not sound the same, right? There should be a very distinctive difference between all these points. What are you saying, right, about the main thing? What are, so there should be a difference, right? Um, so that's something to keep in mind. And it's good to have a logical flow, okay? Meaning, um, you know, when there's for example you can use questions like um, what when or or how uh, let's say for example you know uh, you're talking about the gospel you can have a question that one point could be what is it what is the gospel okay um, and then you could have to whom is it directed right the whole world okay what is it to whom is it is directed and or you could have even thoughts like why do we need to do why do we need to share right these are things that help us so you see that each of these points are very different from each other but it will really help us to you know go in a logical manner logical flow so suppose i'm listening i'm able to understand i'm able to recall even right why should i share the gospel what is the gospel or what is the gospel why should i share the gospel uh, to whom is the gospel you know relevant measure you know and how do i share you could finish with that four points you know how do i go share the god simple message right so it, for everybody it's easier to understand but suppose you don't have these main points or divisions just imagine right if you're just going to talk about things and it's all it's all there muddled up but you're not making a distinction right so either verbally or even you know when you're presenting some things it if, if it's not there then it's um it's, it's just one thing right um it's difficult for people to it's not that people won't be blessed but it's difficult to retain recall it right apply it okay um 
some things to keep in mind is um you know sometimes you might have some good thoughts to share okay you have an outline okay i have these three things i want to share now let me go find some passage where i can fit in you know that's not the way to do it right you go from the text to what you need to share and not the other way around okay um yeah okay there are a few things here you can go through uh, it needs to have continuity um it needs to be original you can always you know study other sermon outlines but it needs to be original okay so that's about the points introduction the the outline the main points sub points etc okay so it will it will really help us um the other thing is illustrations okay we looked at it earlier illustrations what is an illustration okay um it is something that gives explanation to a truth that you're sharing okay the lord jesus used illustrations we saw parables we see parables especially the parable of the lost coin the lost sheep the lost son you know it was all about what was the message about the message about god the father the father's heart right the whole uh, the, he uses three illustrations to you know to illustrate a particular point uh and it's all about the father's heart it's about how the father comes in search of the 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 ones who are lost right and celebrates when the lost are found so and um, if you if you if you notice why does he share those parables the lord jesus is because people are saying hey what is this jesus he's always spending time with the sinners right look at the kind of people that he's hanging out with right so he he is actually sharing illustrating a point that this is actually the father's heart the father's business the or the father's um uh, main uh, intention is to save the lost and that is why he is going there among the lost in order to save that is why jesus was sent to save the lost so he's just proves he's just sharing that this is the father's heart right and so especially about the parable of the of the prodigal son how the father runs to the son in order to receive him and so on right so an illustration is something powerful an illustration gives explanation right about the um, the the truth of the sermon right so it's good it helps us you know uh, we re always remember because uh, as people we always remember a good story right sometimes we forget the point but we remember the story also you know that's also true you know sometimes advertisements you know you watch an advertisement uh but you remember you don't remember the brand name like what is that product right what is it that they are trying to sell you know what is the name of the thing you may not that is also true where the illustration is so good but you know it doesn't connect with what the main point you might forget the main point so uh, these are things that we need to uh, just keep in mind so it should clearly illustrate it should hold the attention um it should also be something that doesn't tire out the listener okay sometimes illustrations can we can go into illustrations with so much of detail uh that people become tired okay and i think as as students we know that just listening ties you out right you become tired as much as the people who are maybe sharing teaching right because listening is tiring so think about an illustration you're giving an explanation about the point but if you're going to too much details it can actually tire the person okay and main thing illustration should be relevant to the audience okay it should be something that they can understand they can relate to right so if you're going to talk about cricket to a bunch of people who don't know anything about the game right you're saying okay it is like let's say the bowler comes and bowls and then you know the the batsman hits it but the fielder says you know you're maybe you're talking about team spirit and unity and all that the the, the fielder says why should i feel you know this guy you know he he never when i when i bowled he didn't feel properly now he's bowling i'm not going to feel or something like that so all this seems very foreign and strange to someone who does not know cricket right for example he's just thinking batsman field he's thinking about a field 
<laughs> there's this harvest and you know, what is this field, batsman, ball? So it doesn't make sense at all, right? So use an illustration where it's relevant for people, where you know the audience. So uh, if it's going to be an urban audience, if it's going to be a rural audience, if it's going to be children uh, or adults, use, um, you know. So it really helps. Because I remember, in, in, uh, I think this was in STBC, and it was in uh, Dimapur. Okay, so we had a short-term Bible college in Dimapur, and uh, all my sessions were afternoon sessions. Okay, so you can imagine a post lunch, everybody is. So every time there was a story, the eyes will open up. Every time we go back to the lesson, eyes will close. <laughs> every time we go, get into the stories so it was very tough you know but what you realize is that the story gets the attention of the people okay so um, so use it well right use it to drive home the point use it to explain the um, the truth right um at the, at the same time you know don't share an illustration because it's your favorite illustration oh i love this story let me share it it should have some connection, right? It should have some connection with the message. It should be relevant to the audience, right? Um, um, some things to avoid: don't exaggerate, manufacture, right? Exaggerate means what? You're sharing a story. Maybe it's a testimony. Maybe it's someone's testimony. Don't don't add to it. Don't make it bigger than it actually is, right? Um, so that's the thing. Um, don't manufacture, don't add details, don't manufacture something if it's not true, right? Uh, don't brag about it. And so, uh, this is especially for, uh, you know, if you're especially uh, uh, talking to a church audience, right? If it's a church, uh, a local fellowship, then the people are more or less going to be the same every Sunday. Like, there will be new people. But the percentage of old people will be almost 90%, right? 90, 95% are the old as in the regulars, right? So if you know that you've used an illustration before, don't use it over and over again. Because ah, people will say, oh, I've heard this story. The pastor has shared so many times. I know this story. I know this story better than him. You know, I can finish this. I can finish the story for him, right? So what, they, what happens is they switch off, right? You're trying to draw them on. You're trying to make it even interesting, but then they are acting. I heard the story, they switch off, right? So don't use that. Keep track of it. Don't use it over and over again. Okay. It's good to you know collect these things, uh, make a note of it. Especially you know you know in our own lives, there's something that we learn, something that we understand, um, and the Lord has spoken to us. You know, to to just practical things. Uh, make a note of it. Make a mental note of it, even write it down so that we don't forget. Okay, okay. So um, this is what uh, you know. The theologian Henry Ward Beecher's um, purpose of translations. This is go to. They assist the argument, meaning they help put forth a point clearly, forcefully. They help the hearer to remember, right? They stimulate the imagination. So you're, you know, when this when there's a story, you're imagining. You're you're right there in the story. Right, you're there. You s visualize. You see it. So it helps um, uh, stimulate the imagination. Right, the whole thing comes alive. Um, it it's also a kind of a rest, a mental rest where you relax a bit. You know, especially if you're talking about maybe you're talking for about an hour, and you're talking about some intense things. Right, intense things which require a lot of concentration, and people need to understand really. You know, if they don't. They're going to lose the point. An illustration helps to relax. It's like a pause, right? It helps to rest the mind. It's it doesn't give mental fatigue, right? Um, they provide for various classes of hearers, uh, meaning some people are verbal or visual when it comes to when they hear, and that's how they learn. They don't read. Um, uh, they are they are they like to hear auditory kind of a learning and also visual. So it provides for different kinds of um, hearers. Builds bridge in difficult places and enforces the truth. Okay, so 
So an illustration helps in all this. So use illustration. Use illustration where appropriate. Use an illustration uh, where you think it's relevant. Okay. So every point need not have a illustration. Right? Every point, if you have five points, it doesn't mean that every point you'd go armed with five stories. No. Right. And um, and it's best, you know, when it, when it comes to illustration, it's best to use, look into the word and see you know what stories are there, what real life examples are there in the Bible that I can use. Right? You can't go wrong with that. Okay. Uh, like for example, I remember we used um, we, we had an outreach, and this was in some schools. Um, and when we were growing up, when we were in our youth group, right? So we had did an outreach. The outreach was simple. We used to go to schools, and this was around the World Cup cricket time. So we used to go to schools. Um, and there was this video that we had, which talked about different cricketers who were believers, who were Christians, right? So we used to go to schools and then show them the video um, of these cricketers. So all the kids were very, you know, um, very, very interested in cricket. They, they were cricket crazy. Uh, World Cup was happening, so they were interested. So it talks about the cricketer and how, uh, how they played and shows footage of all that. Then also talks about their life. So they say, you know, this game is big, I, I give it importance, but there's something which is even more important for me. And they talk about how they came to know Jesus and they give their, you know, and at the end of it, there is prayer. So that was the outreach. The thing is, uh, that was good. So we found out that was fantastic. So we went to a lot of schools and used it. But the, we found out later what happened was one of the guys who was in the in the video, right? He backslid, right? So uh, in the sense, he was involved in a uh, a bribe. He took money, and he was involved in match fixing, right? You know, right? He took money, and then. Um, because of that, he did not play well, or he, he something happened. He he got out at that particular time, or he did not. You know, so that that was in the paper. But it was it ha happened later. But the fact is, I was thinking, you know, what would be in the minds of all those guys who all the, all the school children watch that video, right? They heard this person talk about Jesus, and then this match fixing thing. Now, so that is that's a risk that we are taking. Right? When we actually talk about people in the real world and say that this person is a fantastic Christian, great Christian, etc. Right? When we talk about that, uh, that's a risk. So we need to be a little careful. We can go into the Word and say, you know, first, first off, we can check into the Word. Are there illustrations there? We can use those stories um, because it's, the Word of God is very real. It talks about the pluses. It talks about the negatives of the person. Right? We can talk about that. Okay, um, that's about illustration. Any questions till now? Introduction, title, topic, illustration. These are uh, simple things. Francis has okay. So, Pastor, like my question is from introduction. So, some people will start with the jokes and all. So, what happened is on the in Bible college only, one person start with a joke. Okay. But all boys know that joke. Okay. Some two or three girls left, and after what happened is after that he got he lost his conference on the preaching, uh -huh. and he came to me and day and now what happened? You guys didn't laugh, and I forgot the message. So what to preach? So my question is like if is if is uh, in case anything happened like as this, if you are saying a joke uh, for encouraging people. They are not interested what we can do after that. Yeah, so suppose you start like that and it's it's fallen flat. So we need to get back. So we can't just, uh, you know, we can't run away from the scene. We have to somehow put it together. So if you're a, if you're a person who's used to cracking jokes, you can try another joke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> a, a good one, which you think. If not, it's best to, you know, it's best to just explain it and be real and say, okay, some people understood, some people did not. Uh, meet me later. I can explain it. <laughs> and then, uh, anyway, it's not important. No problem, but let's go on. And then you just move, you know. So, but the thing is, um, like, for us, emotionally, uh, it'll be like, oh, what happened? 
right i thought it will be a, i thought it was a great idea but it didn't you know it didn't work out so for us it takes us back you know it sets us back but we we should we need to just go go ahead you know it didn't work it's fine no problem just go ahead with the rest of the message yeah that's the thing um any uh, other questions no okay okay so let's look at um, the next aspect of the sermon which is the application okay so what is the application it is the practice of the truth you shared about it now you want people to actually or uh, you're explaining how they can put to practice the truth of what you shared okay of or what we s preached so far so it could be about what do you want people to do rather okay so so sunday's message the power of the gospel what do you think is the application for the outreach okay okay mm okay so what was his intention to share that what did he want exactly encouragement for what exactly so so that's the thing right so objective is at the end of the day you want people to go out and share the gospel because the power, gospel is powerful life changing it's a simple message it could be foolishness it could be you know people might mock laugh whatever that's expected but it is the power of god to change for those who receive it right so in the day we want people to uh, do that so this is a good way where okay this this is one way you can do it so did you get into the details of how what is being done by the bible college students like the recent one like book table etc did you share about that or no did you share about that ah he said okay okay yeah so things like that but i remember one's um one particular message again it was about evangelism what we did was um we said okay turn to the person next to you okay and take 2 minutes to share your testimony how would you share okay so it was in a sunday morning service and people could be you know sitting different you know uh, backgrounds etc said okay maybe you've you used to sharing the gospel maybe you've not why don't you take 2 minutes to do this okay talk, we we talked about the four spiritual laws you know how everybody uh, uh, that campus crusade talks about you know on way of sharing the gospel said okay now why don't you share it okay so everybody was like okay people were a little nervous some people were uncomfortable and awkward but then everybody got to you know share okay this is this is how jesus touched my life and so they could hear their own voice you know maybe for many many of them they've not heard themselves you know share the gospel they did that so so the thing is okay now you go and do the same thing so it's a powerful application okay so this is what i can do this is how i can share this is how i can you know share my testimony etc so so the application part is very important right if we leave that part then some will apply it you know some will say okay i've heard the truth now this is i um, you know i'm i'm going to ask god you know how can i apply the truth and i do it but then most will just leave it right so um so application part is very important okay so we'll stop here and uh got you next class right okay thank you god bless you guys uh, online students those who are unwell get well soon anand <laughs> yes, sri radha <laughs>